smiles here in Tampa with good reason. It's a beautiful day, and the Buccaneers are 6-3, and three, coming out of their bye week and putting dead aim on first place in the NFC South. The Minnesota Vikings are taking aim at first place in the NFC North. They're five and four and tied for first with the Chicago Bears. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Minnesota Vikings on the NFL on Fox. Hello everyone, welcome to the NFL on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen along with Tim Bryan and Chris Myers. Well, these two teams have one goal in mind, to win their division. And for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they've been playing well at home, 4-0. Minnesota in first place, haven't been good on the road. What will it take to win, Tim? Well, I think for Tampa, you look at them, they're very excited where they are right now at 6-3 and three coming off the bye week. But the head coach, John Gruden, knows if they're going to get to the top of the mountain down the stretch here, there's areas they need to improve, in particular offensively. Sam, it's the red zone. I mean, they have threatened the end zone more than any team in the league, but it have ended up with far too many field goals rather than touchdowns. On defense, Monty Kiffin's group, uncharacteristically, have given up a lot of big plays. In my opinion, it's a lack of pass rush. They've got to get that going with their front four. For the Minnesota Vikings, um, they've won four or five games with just hard-nosed physical football. You talk about pass rush, those guys have been juiced up up front they've run the ball as good as anybody in the league they've scored as many points as anybody in the league now the big key for them today is ball security far too generous with the giveaways they need to get that short up here in tampa now it's time to look at our yellow book future faces yellow book and yellowbook.com say yellow to the future for the minnesota vikings it's their safety Tyrell Jack Jadson, he could be in uh, play a lot today with Medea Williams hurting. And for Tampa Bay, it's their first round draft pick, Akeem Talib. We'll be set to go. To learn more about this week's Yellow Book Future Faces, go to foxsports.com slash future faces. Today, it's Adrian Peterson against the Bucks defense. Chris Myers coming up, and then it's the opening kickoff. The Bucks and the Vikings are coming up next. Welcome back to Tampa, the NFL on Fox. Some dramatic pictures following the national anthem. So we get ready to kick off the Vikings of the Buccaneers. Longtime Buccaneers safety John Lynch, honorary team captain, saying hello to some old friends, Rondé Barber, Derek Brooks, players he won a Super Bowl with in 2002, a 15-year NFL career. Probably the fiercest hitter south of Ronnie Lott, honorary captain today, officially announcing his retirement tomorrow at one buck place. He told me his favorite tackle but hit of all time 96 the old stadium in Tampa against Barry Sanders because later Sanders said hey that was the hardest hit I ever felt Lynch also takes pride in having last year gone up against Adrian Peterson he'll be watching Peterson today he puts Peterson in that same category as Barry Sanders the complete game breaking back now let's go upstairs Sam Rose and Tim Ryan thanks very much Chris and it's good to see John Lynch here what a day it's cooled off. It was in the 80s on Friday and in the high 70s yesterday. Sunny and cool. There is some breeze. And we are set to go. The Bucks won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Maurice Hicks is deep for Minnesota. Matt Bryant will kick it off. And here we go. Hicks waits at the one. Wrestle down across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Clifton Smith, number 22, takes him down. Gus Farad comes out. He's five and two since taking over as the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, but he has been throwing interceptions of late. The offensive line has been solid. Vicente Shanko, the catching, pass catching tight end. Bernard Berrien did not catch a ball last week. Surprisingly, shut out by the Green Bay Packers. Vikings start from the 27. With Nafahu Tahi, the fullback, and Adrian Peterson at running back, the NFL's leading rusher. Farad puts it up and throws wide of Bobby Wade. Take a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. Kevin Carter continues his long playing streak. Chris Hoban, former Minnesota Viking, has been solid up front. Barrett Rood is the leading tackler, but Derek Brooks is called the heart of the defense. They're miss Savvy Piscatelli 
getting the, the guy, start. Sam, that's really going to have to play well today, Savvy Piscatelli. Jermaine Phillips out with a broken forearm off the play fake. Barat, plenty of time, nobody open, and down he goes. And it's a sack by Rondé Barber, his 23rd of his career. That's Chester Taylor. Shake it up. And no, oh, excuse me, Bobby Wade, 19, not 29. We'll step out for a moment. Bobby Wade is up, but shaking up. Rondé Barber is 23rd career sack, second of the season. The leader among active defensive backs, Chester Taylor in the backfield. Sidney Rice replaces Bobby Wade, third and 11. Barat, the blitz is on. Barrett Rood's got him. So on the first offensive series, the Vikings give up two sacks, 25 this season. There's Barrett Rood right there. He comes unblocked. Watch the quickness of him as he just exploits that gap. Anthony Herrera doesn't even see him. He turns out to the right. The center, Matt Burke, turns to the left. Barrett Rude blows right through that A-gap in between the center of the guard and gets himself an easy sack. The Bucks haven't been getting all that much pass rush and haven't been getting to the passer that much. They got to him twice here. Chris Pluey with a high punt, but short. It bounces, takes a favorable roll for the Vikings and rolls out of bounds at the Tampa Bay 34-yard line. Jeff Garcia brings his team on the field. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are three and one since he took over as the starter from Brian Greasy. Antonio Bryant leads the team in receptions. John Gilmore is starting with Alex Smith, the number one tight end out injured. The offensive line is back intact. Aaron Sears back, starting at left guard. There'll be some interesting matchups on the front lines. Let's do some shifting with Ernest Graham in the backfield. And B.J. Askew off the play fake. Garcia rolls left and through. Michael Clayton with a beautiful catch. Down at the Minnesota 46-yard line, working on Cedric Griffin. Really good job by Michael Clayton, who's going to be here. He's going to push it inside, and then he's going to release to the outside. Leverage route. The guy's taking him on the inside. He's going to break to the outside. Really perfect timing from Garcia. Little boot action, roll in the pocket. I think we'll see a lot of that today with Jeff Garcia rolling out in the pocket. Little hurry up offense, and the handoff is to Ernest Graham. And Graham picks up about three on the play down to the 43 yard line. Kevin Williams makes the tackle. One thing they want to do is a lot of this no huddle Absolutely. offense to keep these big guys on the field and wear them down, especially Pat and Kevin Williams. Jared Allen playing with a shoulder harness, but still the big pass rusher. Ben Lieber playing well. Chad Greenway, the leading tackler. Medea Williams is in uniform and starting, but he was shaken up. That's Ernest Graham, who is coming off a sprained knee. He really didn't practice much this week, and looks like he may have tweaked that thing here I right from the so. get-go. Finally got him on the field a little bit Friday. The good, got hurt two weeks ago in Kansas City. Yeah, the good news for the Bucks is that Warwick Dunn, who had a bad back, is okay, and he's back and ready to go. You see Graham here is... Kevin Williams, oh yeah, there's his right knee, got tweaked right there. You saw Kevin Williams come down and fall on his right knee and kind of twisted it up inside. Second and seven, Garcia operates out of the shotgun with Warwick Dunn and B.J. Askew in the backfield. This is Warwick Dunn with a little spin and a nice move. Down to the 37-yard line, very close to a first down. Looks like about, about half a yard short. Warwick Dunn looks like his back is okay. 
Boy, he's so good in the hole, isn't he? I mean, a lot of people have always said, you know, he's an outside back. He's not. He can run anywhere on the field. He gets up inside in between the tackles. He's got electrifying moves. You just saw that spin move to get free. Short yardage, Jeremy Zuda is eligible. They go to Warwick Dunn, and he is stopped right at short of the line to gain. He comes up short. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Good job up front by the Vikings. Well, and watch the big fella right there. Watch Pat Williams as he just drives right into that double team. You're not moving him. Jeff Fain and Davin Joseph try to double up Pat Williams right there, get him off the football. That's where they tried to run. Big Pat, one of the best at what they call being a space eater, Sam, on the inside. He is so hard to move, and I'll bet you anything he's not 317. Vikings rush defense, best in the NFC, third in the NFL, fourth and one. They go for it. And they don't make it. Warwick Dunn is stopped. Chad Greenway busting through. Greenway has really been playing well, leading the team in tackles, and he stops Warwick Dunn short of a first down. Vikings take over. Outstanding run defense by the Minnesota Vikings. Fewest runs of 10 or more yards against them. Chad Greenway leading tackler in five games this season. Farad dropped the snap, but falls on top. So a terrible start to the game horrible. for the Vikings offense. Well, horrible start. I mean, the first drive, two of the three plays, there's two sacks on the, on the first drive, and then you come out here on first down and you get a center quarterback exchange problem between two longtime veterans. They were three and out on the first series with two sacks. Three, two tight ends in, Shanko and Garrett Mills. Sidney Rice has replaced Bobby Wade. Farad short drop. Throws, and it's complete to Vicente Shanko. Shanko has become a key receiver for the Vikings, a real good pass-catching tight end. And Gus Farad sees this right away. This is his best matchup on the field. He's going to look to his right. He knows Derek Brooks, the linebacker out here, is matched up on his tight end, Vasante Shanko. Now he's just going to put it up and give Shanko an opportunity to make a play. Derek Brooks never saw it coming. Put it up First high enough to where Shanko could go up and get it over the top of Brooks. Gain of 23, three wide receivers. Andre Allison is the third. They hand it to Peterson. And Adrian Peterson, with his first carry of the game, gets it inside the 35 to the 34. First player over 1,000 yards rushing for the second year in a row. Last year is in week eight. This year in week nine. Well, he, you know, we did their game at the end of the year last year in Denver. He was their MVP last season as a rookie. He's no doubt their MVP this season. He is really having a oh. terrific year leading the league. And maybe the rushing. maybe the MVP in the league. On second and six, Peterson takes it outside after a bit of a stumble. He gets down toward the first down line. Let's check out the Giants and the Baltimore Ravens. Here's Kurt Benefee. All right, there's Sam opening drive of the ball game. Brandon Jacobs takes it in from the yard out. Giants give it to him five times. He gets 52 yards on that drive, and New York's got a 7 0 lead early on. Back to Sam, Tim, and Chris. Thank you, Kurt. Eighth rushing touchdown for Brandon well, Jacobs. How long has it been since that Baltimore defense has given up a 100 yard rusher? The big fella's already halfway oh. there. Correction on that. That's 10th rushing touchdown for Brandon Jacobs. On first down. Nice cutback by Peterson. He's down to the 20. The Vikings talked about passing to set up the run, Tim. Well, they passed on the first series, but now they've gone back to their bread and butter. Well, this is, this is what this team is. I mean, they've got to establish their run game. That's the best guy on the field in terms of, of the power backs that are out there. And if they can establish the run, it is going to force Tampa to put that extra defender into the box. Most times it will be the safety, Sabatino, Piscatelli. Then, Sam, they can take their shots in the pass game so they need to run to set up the pass in my opinion Chester Taylor splits out Peterson is in the backfield Taylor's in the slot to the right side and the Bucks come jumping across false start number 62 five yard penalty until second down 
That's on Ryan Cook, the right tackle. We go down to the field to Chris Myers. First half on the Vikings sideline. Bobby Wade shake it up. The, the football collision, their turn, but he will be available to return. Not so good for the Bucs. And Ernest Graham limping in pain and shaking his head. As you pointed out, it was a knee. It's an ankle, so he's questionable for the Bucs. So that means Warwick Dunn or undrafted free agent Clifton Smith in that running back spot for the rest of the way. Now Cadillac Williams is inactive today. Farad swings it out and... Peterson holds on, took a hit, and is out of bounds back at the 28-yard line. Derek Brooks with the first hit on the play. Peterson did well to hold on to the football. And they're going to blitz Gus Farad all day. Here they send two linebackers. They send Cato June and they send Barrett Rude. Barrett Rude forces the quick throw for Gus to get it out. That's exactly how you draw it up as a defense. Then you have your other linebacker out there ready to make the tackle, but. You get some pretty good evidence, Sam, right there of what Adrian Peterson can do in the open field, breaking a tackle of one of the best tacklers in the league, Derek Brooks. Chester Taylor in the backfield. Three wide receivers. Andre Allison motion on third and ten. Draw play, Peterson. Excuse me, that's Chester Taylor. And Taylor gets down to the 25. He gained only three. And it'll bring on the field goal kicking unit for Minnesota. And this is what you see when you got a quarterback that, that doesn't like to move and likes to stay in the pocket and, and just throw the ball and make his reads you blitz him. And that's what teams have done versus Gus Frott. You see their 13th most in the league. Now when you play a guy like Jeff Garcia who can move you don't want to blitz him a lot because when you're blitzing you're having to play man coverage. That means you're turning your back to a quarterback that can run. A lot of people don't do that versus Garcia. Ryan Longwell 43 yard attempt straight away. Chris Cooley the holder. The kick is right down the middle. Ryan Longwell now 18 for 22 this season. The Vikings defense with a big stop against Tampa Bay. They turn it into three points. Minnesota Vikings have had some problems on special teams this season, but not really on kickoff coverage. They've been solid there with guys like Hussein Abdullah, Eric Frampton, and Maurice Hicks. The ball fell off the tee, and Chris Cooley will go back to tee it up. So the Vikings who wanted to play with a lead, they talked about it. Jared Allen said, we want to play with a lead in this game. Well, that way you can get your best pass rushers cranked up and ready to go. And when you're playing with a lead, you know, you're rushing the passer. Jared Allen loves that. Back deep, Clifton Smith, who had a 97 yard kickoff return in Kansas City for a touchdown two weeks ago. Good kick by Cluey. Smith, two yards deep. Brings it out, looks for a lane. There isn't much there. The Vikings have it well covered at the 20 yard line. The Bucks go on offense from the 20, trailing three to nothing. Sam, you see this number here. Tampa Bay on offense, they've done a good job of sustaining drive, 10 plus play drives. They've been good, but the resulting ones in TDs have only been five times. And a big part of it has been turnovers at the end of those good long drives. They come out with two tight ends, swing it out to Antonio Bryant, picks up a block from Gilmore. Gets to the sideline, and he's got a first down as he's out of bounds. Excuse me, just short of a first down. He's out of bounds at the 30-yard line, a yard short. And he's so, really played well. Oh, he really has. What a story. They picked him up for basically the minimum. It's a Bruce Allen special, yeah. the general manager. Give a guy a shot who's got a lot of ability and some pretty decent credentials in this league. And guy was out of football in 2007, now leads the Bucks in catches. He's really stepped up. Gilmore shifts. Askew and Dunn in the backfield. Warwick Dunn spinning in the hole. Wrapped up. And he gets up to the 34. It's a first down. Antonio Bryant, as Tim mentioned, out of football last year. Didn't really start the season with any kind of fanfare, but then when Joey Galloway got hurt, in came Antonio Bryant and took over as the top receiver. He leads the team with 45 receptions coming into play today. And a lot of clutch catches, just like the one in Kansas City. B.J. Askew, the fullback, out of the backfield. And he's back in the lineup after being injured in the game at Chicago when he tore up his hamstring. Well, and they love having him back. I mean, he does a lot of different things. And, and you just saw oh, there he just runs a little zone beater, a little out route. But they love his blocking. Not only is he a body rocker and he moves guys, Sam, but he always gets the right guy. He sees it, 
playing fullback as a running back, which is real key to help the running back out behind him. It's not just hitting the guy, it's hitting the right guy. And I know they're pumped to have B.J. Askew back in the lineup. Give him seven yards, second and three. Out of the shotgun, Garcia looking and throws it away. Nobody open. Time to update the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. Let's go back to Kurt Menefee. On the pregame show, you got to know Greg Jennings. The Bears defense not liking what they see here as he gets in the end zone. Green Bay up 7-0. And Sam and Tim, Aaron Rodgers, 7-for-7, seven 7, 71 yards and a touchdown to start this game. Nice start. Now, yeah, where's Perfect the Bears' start. pass defense? Yeah. What's happened to them this year? Warwick Dunn and Jameel Cook. In the backfield on third and three for the Bucks. Garcia, nobody open. Jared Allen was after him. Here comes Garcia this side, finds Warwick Dunn. And Dunn is down inside the 25. Chad Greenway finally pulled him down. But Garcia had time for someone to get open. That's why he's been to four Pro Bowls. They want him to roll this way, so they actually force him out to his bad side. Now, here's what Jeff Garcia does so well. Reverses field, extends the play. What a great adjustment on the scramble drill by Warwick Dunn. Matched up with a linebacker. If you're shallow, go deep. It's exactly what he did. He turned it up the field, and Garcia found him. Jeff's always, even when he's running, he's always got his eyes down the field to make the throw. Picked up 36 on that play. Dunn bounces it outside, gets inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. Darren Sharper, the safety, comes up to make the stop on Warwick Dunn. This is what you ask your nose tackle to do. Watch Pat Williams right here on Jeff Fain. They're going to try to hook block him. He drives Fain a yard into the hole, forces the cut back. Now, the good thing about that is Antonio Bryant's out there blocking the safety, which freed up an open lane for Warwick Dunn on the cutback. But real surprise, they're trying to attack the middle right where Big 94 is because you don't have a lot of running success right up the gut. And it upset Jeff Garcia, called timeout. And he's going to the sideline to talk things over with John Gruden. One of John Gruden's points of emphasis during the bye week was red zone performance. They've been there a lot. They haven't scored enough touchdowns. The Wildcat. Wildcat with Garcia split out to the left. Full house backfield. Dunn carrying. And he gets close to the 15-yard line. It'll bring up a third and about two. And now a flag comes in from referee Mike Carey. And the Bucks are upset. I think True Blood came in late. After the ball was dead, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 65. 15-yard penalty, the down will count, third down. You know, his aggressiveness, and he's very aggressive, gets him in trouble sometimes. Watch him hear what he does to Ben Lieber right there. I mean, the play's over, the whistle's blown. You see Chad Greenway going, what happened? I mean, he just comes and jacks him. Yeah. Well, it cost the Bucks 15, and again, there are some of the problems that occur now, well, in the yeah. red zone. Here they are in the red zone, and they take a dumb penalty. And, you know, True Blood is, is the, you know, he's a foxhole guy. If you mess with his guys, he's going to come in, and he's going to protect his guys. And apparently, he felt Ben Lieber was putting a little extracurricular on Warwick Dunn on that play, so he came for the cleanup shot. But it's always, always the guy that does it last that gets caught. The former Buck, Ellis Wims, is in a defensive tackle for Minnesota. Warwick Dunn and Clifton Smith in the backfield. Now Smith splits out to the left. Two tight ends, Gilmore and Stevens. And on third down, the screen pass to Warwick Dunn. Gets to the 20 and takes a hard hit from, Man from Antoine Winfield. Short of the first down. And now the Bucks send out their field goal kicking unit. So as we showed you, they get into the red zone. Something happens. They've been able to kick a lot of field goals, but they need more touchdowns. And here, again, they got to the 17 and took the bad penalty. Here's Matt Bryant, 20 for 23 this season. This is a 39-yard attempt. 
Josh Bidwell the holder. Andrew Economos the long snapper. Hey, come on! Sharp! Sharp! Bryant ties the game. He puts it right down the middle. 39 yard field goal for Matt Bryant. Matches Ryan Longwell's. True blood shaking up a little bit. He took the bad penalty. There's Bill Muir, the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach, and talking to his right side there, looking at the pictures, talking to Davin Joseph, Jeremy Trueblood, his right guard, his, his right tackle. And I'll tell you, those guys are very formidable. They're nasty. They get after it. But stupid penalty by Trueblood. And, you, you know, you love guys to play aggressive, but you love them playing aggressive in between the whistles, not after the whistle. Not only do they work closely together, they are close friends away from the field. And I, I think I think Davin and Joseph and, and Jeremy, I mean, when they're playing together, they're at their best. When one of them's out and Davin was out the first four games, it True Blood doesn't even look the same when, when Davin Joseph's not out there and vice versa. Matt Bryant to kick it off. Hicks steps up to the seven yard line. And he's tripped up. Beautiful play down the field. It's Clifton Smith again. They signed him off the practice squad a couple of weeks ago, and he has been a big time contributor for this team, not only on the returns, but making tackles as well. Let's go down to the field to Chris Myers. Well, after that initial series, Sam and Tim, when things looked a little herky-jerky, of all people helping out Gus Ferrat and encouraging the offensive line, Adrian Peterson, who said even last week he felt it was necessary to be more visible and vocal as a leader, even though he's a second-year player. So he'll do that throughout the game. He said it keeps him more in the flow of the game and keeps his teammates ready to roll. On the other sideline, they retaped the ankle of uh, Ernest Graham. He tried to give it a go. They've taken him to the locker room, so that even looks uh, further questionable for the Bucks. Sam, Tim? Certainly bad news for the Bucks, and now for the Vikings, their backup tight end, Garrett Mills, is down on the field, and he's in pain. And he's been hurt. He's been hurt the last couple of games, I believe, with an ankle injury, and they've deactivated Jeff Dugan today. So this is going to stress out their tight end package for right. sure and how they've used those guys blocking up in front of Adrian Peterson. And you can see left leg problem for Garrett Mills as he limps to the sideline. There is Vicente Shenko the pass catching tight end Jim Kleinsasser is the man who does the blocking number 40 probably one of the unsung heroes on this Vikings team because of all that he does no doubt well he's like 275 pounds he's like having an extra offensive lineman at the line of scrimmage and as coach Childress told us last night he said he changes the line of scrimmage for us number 40 10 year veteran is a big part of what they do in the run game Bucks players urging the fans to get loud Adrian Peterson in the backfield with Fahu Tahi, the fullback. Tahi outside. Here's Peterson. Gets up to the 30 yard line. Pickup of about six on the play. Two weeks ago, what a comeback by the, the Minnesota Vikings last week, excuse me, after they let a lead get away at home against the Green Bay Packers. Then late in the game, they went on a 69 yard drive and six of the seven plays involved that man, Adrian Peterson. Well, he put the team on his back and willed him to victory. And it was an amazing thing to see after a fumble how he responded and led him to the end zone on that drive. On second and four. Peterson gets up close to the 35 yard line. He's got enough for the first down. This is their money side. When they need a first down, they're running right behind their left guard, Steve Hutchinson. And watch the down block, the double team that he has right here on Chris Hovan. I mean, they take Hovan three yards off the ball, and then that's all that, that Adrian Peterson needs. I mean, there's so many times when he's running the ball and he runs into a pile, he's not going backwards. Look at that. Eight straight seasons, he's had a thousand yard rusher behind him. One of the better guys in the league at offensive guard. Two tight ends, Shanko and Klein Saucer. Peterson spins away. And there he 
it goes down the sideline in the Bucks territory, out of bounds at the 43. What a move at the line of scrimmage by Adrian Peterson. Rondé Barber is the force guy here. You'll see him out on the edge. He needs to force it to Savvy Piscatelli, but he comes too flat. Adrian spins out of it right there. Now he's going to circle the defense. He's got the edge. That's what you call run fits. And the run fit for Rondé Barber was to fit outside, force it up inside to your strong safety. He didn't achieve that. Adrian Peterson had a big pop. Gain of 22. Chester Taylor now in the backfield on first down. Off the play fake for Rock. Throwing and he's got a man wide open. And the ball caught down at the 27 yard line by Adrian, by Bernard Berrien. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 97, a blow to the head. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That's Jimmy Wilkerson and tack on 15. And that's the right call. There he is coming from the left defensive tackle spot. And watch his left arm as he accelerates. Pow. Left arm right to the grill of Gus Farratt. Mike Carey will call that every time. 16-yard pass connection between Farratt and Berrien. Berrien was shut out last week by Green Bay. And then you add 15 yards on the penalty to Wilkerson. And the Vikings with a first and 10 just inside the Bucks 14. Taylor in the backfield. And two tight ends in. Chester Taylor gets a couple of yards down to the 12-yard line. Tenard Jackson in on the stop. Tenard Jackson becoming very important in the defense with Jermaine Phillips. Oh, they out. have to, and there's a lot of pressure on both of those safeties. Tenard Jackson has been a starter since his rookie year last year and has really played well, but the pressure will be highlighted today. And, and I think when you look at the running game Minnesota brings to the table, their play-action pass, the safeties are going to be a big part. And as you said, no Jermaine Phillips really magnifies what those guys have to do today. Final seconds tick off in the first quarter. Each team with a field goal. 3-3 end of the first. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers in Tampa, where the Minnesota Vikings are on the move. Second and eight. Make it second and nine. At the 12-yard line, off the play fake, Farad rolling, throwing to the end zone, try to hit Vicente Shanko, flag on the play. Looks like a holding against the Bucks. I think that's exactly what it's going to be, holding on Rondé Barber, as Shanko was trying to get away Before from the him. pass, holding, defense number 20, five-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Shanko here is going to get outside, and he's just going to work the outside on a leverage route right there. Now, he wants to cut out right there, and Rondé Barber just holds on to him just enough to where the official saw it and threw the flag. That was called a holding because it happened before, Sam, the ball was thrown and the ball was in the air. Two tight ends in, first and goal, Vikings at the seven-yard line. Peterson. Slipping through the hole and then pushed back as he got to about the three yard line. Picked up four. Here's Adrian Peterson. He's already halfway to a hundred yard game. Four, six, eight, six, five, 22. Well, that's what he does. He gets a big pop. But watch the, this is what I, again, run fits. Watch Savvy Piscatelli right there. This is his gap. He's going to stay home. He's going to stay home. He's going to stay home. Wait for the cutback. Pow. There it is. In the hole. Perfect. Seven carries, 55 yards for Peterson on second and goal. Peterson again. Nothing there. Great job by the Bucks. They really held the point of attack. Ryan Sims leading the way on the stop. Monty Kiffin always talking gap control in this defense. Here's the guy. This is his gap, the B gap between the guard and the tackle and watch Ryan Sims play it. He's going to work it, work it, work it. The gap moves. He stays in it and gets a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Bucks had to call a timeout. They had defensive men running on the field and running off the field at the same time. Monty Kiffin wants to get things settled down.
the players urging the crowd on to get loud. The Vikings have a third and goal just inside the four. Peterson in the backfield. Three wide receivers. Perot quick outside. And touchdown, Bobby Wade, who was shaken up earlier in the game, takes the quick toss from Gus Perot and takes it in. And the Vikings are on top again. Bobby Wade's first touchdown of the season. Good stuff because they're mugging up Tampa with all the linebackers. Just a little swing pass to the slot. Bobby Wade, enough of a block right there by Barrion. And Wade just turns on the Jets, gets in, crosses the plane before Jannar Jackson can tackle. Longwell's extra point is good. Nice drive by the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, perfect play, perfect play call against that defense. Biggest games this January, and they're only on Fox. Brian Clark at the 10 yard line. The wide receiver cuts to the middle, and the Vikings wrap him up at the 27 yard line. And the ball came loose. There's a flag down. As they fight for the ball at the bottom of the pile. And we'll check out the flag. Well, I know 22 Clifton Smith came flying over the pile late. I don't know if that's where the flag came from, but I know the flag was thrown late from the backside. There's no foul on the play. All of the action is legal. Ah, is. Thank First you. Down. Mike Carey is our referee. We go down to the field to Chris Myers. Chris? And Clifton Smith, who has uh, been a terrific surprise <laughs> and untrue. Drafted free agent from Fresno State. Not on this particular play. Of course, he did have a return in their comeback against Kansas City. They relayed him the Bucks due to Warwick Dunn in size and skill set. They say he can be a third down back, mostly on the roster because of a return specialist. Went to the same school as, as Michael Pittman, and they figure in this game with Ernest Graham's injury even more so. You're right about that, Chris. Thank you. On first down, Garcia to Antonio Bryant. A first down up at the 39 yard line. That last drive by the Vikings, 76 yards in eight plays, and Adrian Peterson had 36 yards on five carries. Well, the one that big drive. pop, the yeah. 22 yard run, was the big one when he busted it outside right at the end of the first quarter and got around Rondé Barber. Ball up close to the 40 yard line. Two tight ends in. Garcia six for seven, 93 yards to start the game. Seven for eight as he hits Jeremy Stevens, the tight end. The ball is up close to the 45 yard line. You know, it's interesting. They're playing pretty good offensively. Jeremy Stevens is, hasn't threatened the end zone a lot, but he's been okay over the last you know, four or five weeks. Antonio Bryant's been the key guy. Michael Clayton has played well, all in the absence of Joey Galloway, and they needed guys to step up. Remember when Galloway got hurt and we yeah. did the Chicago game? Who, who's going to be the guy that steps up? Well, Antonio Bryant's been the big one, but they've really gotten a nice mix from everybody. And Galloway is healthy. John Gruden likes the receivers playing the way they are. Garcia gets time, and he finds Jeremy Stevens down to the 35 yard line. He beat Ben Lieber, the linebacker, on the play. Stevens, an outstanding receiver, a pickup of 20. And he's all a 6 7, and they like this matchup over here. Jeremy Stevens on Ben Lieber. Here comes the blitz, so now he knows he's got man coverage on the tight end. Actually, they only rushed four, but there was man coverage out there. Lieber on Jeremy Stevens. He threw it right over the linebacker's shoulder. Lieber never knew the football was coming. Nice ball. Nice, nice throw by Tim Garcia. And that's what Garcia does. I mean, he hits his back foot, and when he gets it out on time, Sam, he's hard to stop. Clifton Smith splits out wide left. Warwick Dunn in the backfield with Garcia on first down. Plenty of time. Warwick Dunn down the backfield. Cedric Griffin came over to take him down, but another first down for the Bucks at the 23-yard line. Boy, they moved down the field in a hurry. Well, this is 12 yard. This game. is their offense. I mean, they're zone beaters. If they know the team is going to get, listen, when they find man up, they're going to hit the right guy, Jeff Garcia. And then when he knows it's zone, he knows where the windows are. 
That window was wide open on his check down to his running back, Warwick Dunn. There was not a defender near it. Now Clifton Smith lines up in the backfield with B.J. Askew. No more shifts. And Smith carrying. Nice move. And the 15-yard line. Clifton Smith, 5'8", 190, and a nice pickup. Let's check out the Saints in Kansas City. Here's Kurt. Well, that's where we will start, Sam. There's Deuce McAllister diving in from the yard out. Saints have a 10-7 lead over the Chiefs in the second quarter. And in Carolina, Detroit scored the first 10 points of the game, but now it's Jake DeLome and Jeff King hooking up to make it a three-point contest also in the second. Back to that other NFC North-South matchup between Minnesota and Tampa and <laughs> Sam and Tim. Thanks. Kurt, and you see the standing pick up of eight on that last play. Two tight ends. Play fake Garcia. Rolling left, being chased by Napoleon Harris and shoves him as he gets to the sideline. There's a flag on the play. Garcia out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And I think they're going to get Ben Lieber on that matchup with Jeremy Stevens in the end zone. A little hold? Yeah, I think so. Mike Carey. While the quarterback still has the ball, holding defense number 51 from the end of the run, five-yard penalty, automatic. First down. That penalty hurts the Vikings, and now here are the Bucks again in the red zone, driving. Will they be able to punch it in the end zone? Well, That's last time down problem. there, last time down there, it's been a problem all year. Last time down there in this game it was Jeremy Trueblood with a. Really a stupid penalty that pushed him back, and they ended up with a field goal. There's Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator. You know, his team hasn't been great in the red zone this year with their backs against the wall. Pretty average in terms of allowing touchdowns versus field goals. With only two tight ends active, Jeremy Zuda, backup rookie tackle, is in as a third tight end, and he shifts to the right side. The play fake Garcia. Throws it away. Antonio oh, Bryant was in the end zone, but he threw it wide of him. And now Garcia is shaken up. He was hit. Well, Ray Edwards just blew him up after Garcia threw the football. I mean, he crushed him. Jeff rolled back to the middle of the field, unloaded it, and then here comes Ray Edwards late and just lights Jeff Garcia up. And there is a flag on the play. The backup quarterback is Luke McCown. Watch Garcia here as he unloads it. Now here comes the late hit. Pow! Oh, boy. Oh, that's brutal. Personal foul. Rough the quarterback. Defense number 91. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. I would venture to say Ray Edwards might wind up a little lighter in the wallet. Yeah, that wasn't even that. close. That wasn't even close. And they're going to protect quarterbacks. And... You know, this one right here, I mean, watch how many steps. Ball's gone one, two. He, I mean, he took three or four steps. Did Ray Edwards when he lit up Jeff Garcia. And it's something that the league frowns upon. The commissioner has talked about it. And you're going to, you know, there's a, a likelihood. Well, guys that, get fined when it's close. Yeah. That's not even close. That's right. That also hurts the Vikings with the ball <laughs> down to the three-yard line. How tough is that, dude, though? Garcia hangs in huh? there. He doesn't want to come out of the lineup. He was he wasn't happy at the start of the season when he came out. Jeremy Zuda is eligible. Jeremy Stevens motioning the toss to Warwick. Done nothing there. Great job. Great penetration up front by the Minnesota Vikings, led by Antoine Winfield. Well, you knew it was going to be a run because Jeff just got hurt on the last play. Watch this corner support by Antoine Winfield. There's nobody better in the league. Watch him dip right under the fullback right there, stay on his feet, and then get Warwick done for a tackle for loss. If this guy does not make it into the Pro Bowl this year, something's wrong. He's a top five corner oh. in the league, and not just as a run support guy and comes up and tackles. He's terrific in coverage. He needs to get his due and end up in Honolulu. Three wide receivers are all left. Mike Hilliard is in as the third wide. The tight end, Jeremy Stevens, out wide right. Garcia still with it. Being chased by Lieber. He throws, and the ball was batted down incomplete. 
Medea Williams, who was questionable for today's game, broke it up. Or Dunn slow getting up. There's been some popping out there. Uh, well, two physical football teams. What did John Gruden say yes, uh, Friday? He said this is going to be a real signature game for our offensive line. And the players said this could be a fist fight all afternoon. Now here Clifton comes, Smith yeah. is in with B.J. Askew. This is third and goal for the Bucks at the seven-yard line. Three wide receivers. Can you defer? Wide receiver. Everybody out. Shovel pass to Clifton Smith. Never got going. That was played well by Ray Edwards up front. And once again, the Bucks fail to get it into the end zone. And here comes the field goal kicking unit. Well, I know that's frustrating. Oh boy, John Gruden. I mean, that, that's an area where they really try to put a point of emphasis on it during the off week. Got to get better in the red zone. Lack of execution, and that time really just owned at the line of scrimmage for all those plays. 26-yard field goal try for Matt Bryant. Josh Bidwell, the holder. And the kick is good. Bryant two for two in the game. 22 for 25 on the season. It's 10-6 Vikings. It's been a tough bruising game so far here in Tampa. Jeff Garcia, no stranger to chin uh, injuries. He, he came off after that last series of downs with a gash at his right chin. The doctor called over the trainer to, it was bleeding heavily, to bandage that. Garcia also holding his left side rib cage area. John Gruden said to him, way to hang in there. And right now he is uh, hanging in there. Work done, by the way, Sam. Tim seems to be okay. Thanks, Chris. You join us late. Ernest Graham is out with an ankle injury. Matt Bryant, line drive kick. Maurice Hicks from the five. Picks up a couple of blocks and falls forward to the 29 yard line. So the Vikings with the lead 10 6 and the ball at the 29. Growing up in Texas, I was definitely a Longhorn fan. My uncle played for the Longhorns. I know a lot of people thought I would be a Longhorn. I was, um, you know, bleeding on. If I had to weigh my options, and I ended up being a Sooner. It was a good decision. And if I had to do it again, it would be Crimson and Cream. The Longhorn fan went to Oklahoma, and what a pro he's become in his second year. He carries 54 yards today. Two tight ends for the Vikings, who start from the 29-yard line. Peterson cutting it back. The hole opens up and he gets up to the 34 yard line. Vikings' first possession was three and out with two sacks. Since then, two eight play drives that have resulted in 10 points. Well, they, they, Brad Childress got the running game going. That, that's what happened. And then Gus Ferrat was allowed to start hitting some short passes. Look at the depth right there. And a lot of that is just so that he can be patient running the football. He hits the hole so fast with so much velocity that a lot of times they need to get him in what they call a deep dot where he has the, the blocks in front of him have time to develop before he gets there. Fine saucer shifts, second and five. Peterson bounces off one man. He's wrapped up as he gets to the 36-yard line. Rondé Barber makes a good tackle. We go to Chris Myers, who's the best tackler we have. <laughs> I couldn't catch up with Adrian Peterson, although his handshake will break your <laughs> arm. Everybody's used to that, but he did tell us, Sam, that he has a goal, of course, to make the playoffs and, and win, but uh, 2,000 yards, that's his personal goal. He said, I'll take 500 and win a Super Bowl, but I, I'm not afraid to admit I can believe that I can accomplish 2,000 yards, but he talks a lot about yards he left out on the field uh, that he thinks he can improve on. And he has had four consecutive 100-yard games. Now on third down, Perot finds Bernard Berrien. First down of the 47-yard line. Good throw, good catch. And Berrien, the man who was signed as a free agent, very important in the offense. Especially for Gus Farad. Well, this is a good route because Gus Farad knows he's got a cushion out there. People are afraid of Bernard Berrien's deep speed. So what they do is they use Bobby Wade to run a slant on the inside of him, which takes the slot corner out of the way, opens the window, really a double slant. He runs a slant right next to it, 
wide open in front of the corner. Second catch for Barry, and this is Peterson trying to get outside, but the Bucks do a great job penetrating and bringing him down. Jimmy Wilkerson leading the way. And Bernard Barrian will see a lot of this today, and he's seen a lot of it all year as a big play receiver. It's called cloud coverage, where they'll show what looks like cover four with four deep guys. They'll roll the corner up, and then they'll put a safety deep over the top, and then they'll do what they call sky coverage. But this time it looks the same, but now they're going to roll a safety up in front of them, and then you got the corner back in the deep third. Either way, it's always two guys rolling over to Bernard Barron when they get into the cloud and the sky cover. No cloud coverage here. Beautiful blue sky, Tim. And Farratt steps back and calls a timeout. I like the sky coverage because it's nice, beautiful day, but the cloud coverage, I don't know. <laughs> you didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers two weeks ago in Kansas City, their best comeback in franchise history they were down 24 to 3 it started with Clifton Smith a 97 yard kickoff return for a touchdown and then Jeff Garcia handed it off to Ernest Graham who found Alex Smith then a touchdown to Bryant a two-point conversion got it to overtime Matt Bryant won it 30 to 27. Offense, it was really a tale of two halves. Offense was terrific in the in the second half. Defense was horrible in the first half of that game. When we put on the tape this week to watch that from, from Kansas City two weeks ago, it did not look like Buck Ball defensively. Gave up a 100-yard rusher and a bunch of points. And then, of course, the offense in the first half, it was about the turnover. Two wide receivers left, two tight ends right. Parat short drop. Vicente Shanko on the grab. Stays on his feet. It takes three men to bring him down at the 37 yard line. Pickup of 17. Gus Farad stepping in after the first two games of the season. The Vikings losing at Green Bay and losing to Indianapolis. And though he has thrown a lot of interceptions, he has put the bat. The game back in this offense. Well, he's five and two as a starter, and I think you know his experience really comes into play. He's a flatliner in the huddle, good or bad. He's the same guy getting ready for the next play. Hand off to Chester Taylor, reverses. Sidney Rice is going to throw it. He puts it up deep, but nobody's there. Razzle dazzle, and the receiver wasn't out there. <laughs> What do you think about that play? Well, I, it was a good play, but it was not executed properly. Vasante Shanko, you're going to see him. He's over. Watch him get to the middle of the field. It's wide open, or he's over here. Watch him get to the middle. It's just way too late from Sidney Rice. I mean, if he would have got it right when he got it, set up and thrown the football, he would have had Shanko wide open in the hole. Just way too late in the execution to unload the football. Sidney Rice threw a couple of passes last year that he completed. Right now it's second and ten. Peterson. Nice moves. He finds the openings, doesn't he? And he fights his way inside the 30 out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Boy, that was a beautiful run. Pick up nine on the play. Starts with a good block right here from his fullback. And watch him cut off this block and then three or four consecutive cuts after. There's the block. Barrett Rude goes to the inside. He hops to the outside. There's cut one. There's cut two. There's cut three. He's amazing. It, it, his ability to start and go from first gear to fifth gear is pretty amazing. Quick, quick, explosive acceleration. Third and less than a yard. Straight ahead they go. They've got the first down. Adrian Peterson carries for the 13th time here in the first half. In three of the last four games, He's carried at least 25 times, and last week against Green Bay, when he had 192 yards, he carried 30 times. That's a pretty good job right there. I mean, 5.7 average, and then look at this, yards after contact. Run after contact, 36 yards for Adrian Peterson. Talking to him yesterday, said he's left a lot of yards on the field. Getting tackled by his foot, Sam, he said, unacceptable. <laughs> right to the weight room for some more spots. In motion. Farad steps back and now goes, decides to run for it. Gets hit hard as he gets down to the 23. Picked up a couple. Barrett Rude makes the tackle. Farad pulled it down in a hurry. 
He's not a, a runner as a quarterback, no, not known for his scrambling. On well, the running back coach there, Eric Bieniemy was just hot when that play developed. Because when Gus Farratt took off to run up the middle, that clipboard that he's holding, it made the turf in a heartbeat. He threw that thing hard down to the ground. He's done a good job, Eric Bieniemy coaching the running back. Tenth play of the drive, Chester Taylor, nothing there. Kevin Carter and Javon Hay in on the tackle. He has been so good for so long. Um, Kevin Carter, watch what he does to Ryan Cook right here, the right offensive tackle. I mean, just a quick swim to the outside, and that, that has no chance. He forces the quick cutback and then gets help from Javon Hay, who did the same thing on the other side. This half is moving along. Two-minute warning. Tigers on the inactive list today. He's knee. just a fan. He's got a knee injury. <laughs> I'm wrestling him after the game today. How about I got to get something on Tiger Woods. <laughs> Third and nine for the Vikings. Chester Taylor in the backfield. Blitz is on. Barat drops the screen to Taylor. Three blockers there with him. But he's brought down as he crossed the 20-yard line short of the first down. And here comes the field goal kicking unit with Ryan Longwell coming out. Well, that, the, June in on the stop. That's what Monty Kiffin wants you to do. Throw a screen, run a draw, something up in front of his defenders because historically, and there's Monty right there, they are so good in space as tacklers. And once you get the ball up in front of four or five of his defenders, rarely are you going to pick up a bunch of yards afterwards because of their ability to tackle in space. John Gruden used up his last time out of the first half to preserve time to get the ball back. And we go to the sideline. Chris Myers, you getting golf tips from Tiger? <laughs> no, we're both just catching some rays here, Sam. Enjoying a good football game, but it's hard hitting, so hard hitting, in fact, that Mike Carey and the team of officials has had to warn both benches and both the players on both sides to ease up a little bit, play the game, but no late hits. Players could be tossed if they don't reel it back in a little bit. And before the game, actually, John Gruden joked with Mike Carey about uh, throwing flags, but no joking at this point. Thanks, Chris. 37 yards. Try for Ryan Longwell right down the middle. Tiger would have loved that one. He put it right through with a little draw on it. <laughs> and Longwell gives Minnesota a 13 to 6 lead. Oh, we've got a great schedule on a doubleheader week next week on the NFL on Fox. The Bucks will go to Detroit. The Vikings will go to Jacksonville. Tim and I will go to Baltimore to see the Eagles play the Ravens and the 49ers play the Cowboys. Later on, Giants at Arizona, Carolina at Atlanta. How about that in a divisional matchup? And it all begins with the Bill Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. So it's a seven point Minnesota lead. Vikings have played a terrific first half. I well, think. It's, been, yeah, it's been very, very physical. And both times they've been down in the, in the red zone defensively, and they've kept Tampa out and have held them to field goals. Running the ball on offense and then the short precision passing attack, they couldn't ask for anything more. Russ Farad, seven for eight, 73 yards. Very efficient. And Adrian Peterson, 13 carries, 71 yards. Longwell kicks it off. Clifton Smith from the seven. Straight ahead. Works his way up to the 30 before he's hauled down. Maurice Hicks. In on the stop with Eric Frampton. And an injured Viking on the play, as Tim said, the hitting is hard, and a lot of guys have been shaken up. That's Benny Sapp, back up defensive back. And right now, there's some concern as they hurried, the medical team hurried out on the field. Well, this is is going to stress out their secondary with Benny Sapp because he's out there now as their nickelback because Charles Gordon got hurt and was lost for the year right. last year. The guy who had been playing in their sub package is their extra corner. So Benny, Benny Sapp went in and finished off that role last week and he's been a big part of this game plan here today against Tampa. Medea Williams is playing hurt. An important game. Carolina is home against Detroit. What's happening, Kurt Menefee? Well, the Lions came out of the gate and took a 10-0 lead, but since then, it's basically been D'Angelo Williams and the Carolina Panthers. 
56-yard touchdown run by Williams. Remember, he had a big game last week, 69-yard score and 140. He's adding to it, and Carolina now has the lead for the first time at 14-13. Back to Sam, Tim, and Chris. Thanks very much, Kurt. Lions seem to do that frequently. They get off to a good start and then just seem to fade away. And wow, what a run by D'Angelo well, Williams. D'Angelo Williams has been terrific. This is his best year by far as a pro. Drafting the rookie, Jonathan Stewart, you know, high in the first round, really has stimulated D'Angelo Williams to, to have a great training camp. He's been off to a terrific start. You know, that team, if he rushes for more than 80 yards, they're undefeated in his career. Wow. How about the race in the NFC South? A lot of people thought the NFC East, and it's worked out that way. It's a terrific race in the NFC East. The, all the teams are strong there, but in the NFC South, you've got Carolina at seven and two, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the defending division champions at six and three, Atlanta, the surprise team at six and three, and they're winning today. Carolina's now leading. And New Orleans is really a little bit of a disappointment. Well, I, I'll say this, and you see the standings there, very tight. Um, and a lot of football left, but I would speculate that there will be two teams coming out of the NFC South. They'll be the division winner, and then one of those teams will represent as a wild card in the playoffs. The NFC South as a division is 17 and one on home field. Garcia works out of the shotgun. The Bucks have no timeouts remaining. Garcia connects with Jeremy Stevens. Made one man miss. And he's brought down at the 40-yard line. Fox still running. Chad Greenway took him down. Second no and two at the 40. Second and two, Warwick done in the backfield with Garcia. Who has time, trying to get it to Dunn, and it was batted away by Chad Greenway. The Vikings lost their starting middle linebacker, and one of their key players, E.J. Henderson. Chad Greenway has really stepped up and had a terrific season. He has picked up the slack. Now, he plays outside linebacker, the weak side linebacker, and Napoleon Harris has come in and has gotten better. But this guy right here leads him in tackles on defense. He was a first-round pick a couple years ago, hurt his ACL, tore up his knee year number one. He's got a terrific nose for the football. And he gets better and better every game and does it all. I mean, he rushes the passer, he makes tackles, he gets picks. Really a complete linebacker. With three wide receivers, Garcia gets time. One to go deep, couldn't find anybody. Hendrick is brought down by Antoine Winfield. You know what? Antoine Winfield, 5'9", 180. When he hits you, you're stopped. You, you don't go anywhere. You, and he's just one of the better tackling corners in the league. And Minnesota calls a timeout now. Now they want to preserve some time so that they have a chance to play a little bit of offense. There's Antoine Winfield. The guy just does everything, and he hits, and when he hits, you oh. hear it and feel it. The balls pop loose. I mean, this guy is something, and and teams are afraid to throw well, at him. Well, they don't him. really throw at him anymore because even at 5'9", people don't talk about his ability in, in terms of route recognition, knowing off what offenses are trying to do. He's very, very good as a defender in the pass as well. I've said it before. I mean, he's just a football player that happens to play cornerback. <laughs> Josh Bidwell, first punt for the Bucks here in the first half. Low kick. Bounces down around the 30-yard line. And a favorable roll for the Bucks. It stops at the 24-yard line. Only one timeout remaining for the Minnesota Vikings. After a 37 yard punt. Let's see what Brad Childress elects to do with Gus Farratt. Well, I think Gus will take what the defense gives him. I mean, if they're way back in a huge prevent playing the deep ball, you could easily see something underneath, pick up some yards, get it out of bounds. They still have one timeout, as you said. And Bernard Berrien has been the big guy deep in terms of getting the big long ones down the football field. And Sidney Rice on the other side is no slouch either. Just coming back off a knee injury. The team to leave in for Tampa Bay as a fifth defensive back. Vikings have scored on each of their last three possessions. This is Chester Taylor. Oh, and hit hard as he got to the 30-yard line. Big collision. 
Taylor gets up okay. One of the Bucks is shaken up. And that's Greg White who's hurting. What a tackle by Sabi Piscatelli. Whoa. Karat short drop outside. That fall off the arm of Bobby Wade. Bobby Wade came into the game as the leader in receptions for the Vikings with 36 and has caught one today. Greg White has come to the sideline with a right arm or right shoulder injury. Third down for the Vikings, third and four. to keep it on the ground. Chester Taylor, not much there. Got up close to the first down mark. Cato June makes the stop. And that'll do it for the first half. Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been dominant on home field over the last two seasons with a plus one turnover ratio and Minnesota decided to be very careful in the right the football. Move, the right move. I mean, they took a draw first versus that deep shell cover two. They didn't get anything on it. And then after that, it was like, let's just play to get into the to get into the half because of that turnover differential at home. Brad Childress and his offense were not taking any chances with Tampa having an opportunity to take it back. And that was way. one of your keys, ball security for the Minnesota Vikings. They didn't turn the ball over. Their first series of the game wasn't a good one, but after that, they scored 13 points, and they lead at halftime over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 13 to 6. The Visa Halftime Report is next. Welcome back. A beautiful day here in Tampa. We're getting set for the third quarter here. Sam Rose along with Tim Ryan, Chris Myers down on the field, and for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tim, in the first half, no running game, and they couldn't punch it in when they got to the red zone. Well, that is definitely the key. Now, Ernest Graham getting hurt, Sam, didn't didn't help the Tampa Bay Bucks offensively. Jeff Garcia really is keeping him in this game with his arms. Some good checkdowns to Warwick Dunn. He had the one big pop. Jeremy Stevens with, with three catches, but they're only one for five on third down. Need to find a little bit of a running game here in the second half. Defensively, um, first quarter it was tough against Adrian Peterson and Minnesota came out here and one bad drive to start it and then they really started getting it going throughout the first quarter but since then the Bucks on defense have started to get a feel for Adrian Peterson and he, they've really kind of started to knock him back there in the second quarter after deferring at the start of the game the Bucks get the kickoff to start the second half and Ryan Longwell put it through the end zone now we go down to the field to Chris Myers. What'd you find out from the coaches, Chris? Well, I talked to coaches and to referee Mike Carey, who told me it wasn't really a warning, but he did have to go over to both benches and say, control your players on the field so I don't have to. When I asked Brad Childress about that, he said, I don't want our guys to lose our intensity to play within the rules. He'll run more of Adrian Peterson. He likes the way his offense is working. John Gruden shaking his head. He said, yeah, I yelled at my team. They deserve to be yelled at. Maybe we'll see some Joey Galloway in the second half, but we can't make mistakes. we got to score in the red zone. Graham is out injured with an ankle. Garcia cut chin. So much for fun during the bye week for Tampa. That said, he hates, John Gruden hates the bye week. Garcia on first down. Nice grab by Antonio Bryant. And he turns it into a good game of 24 yards up to the 44, maybe make it the 43, gain of 23 on the play. Well, here he's coming from the right side in what you call a snug formation. He was lined up tight next to the offensive line, which is most of the time going to force a zone coverage. And that time he just ran a drive route over the middle in front of the safety and Garcia found it. Warwick Dunn cutting it back. Gets across the 45 up to the 47. Pick up a four on the play. Warwick Dunn seven carries 12 yards in the first half and I think they've been running in the wrong spot and and John Gruden and his offense yes they want to establish the run but to me their best run has been that outside power where they block down with the tight end and they get the offensive tackle out in space they've really challenged those defensive tackles right up the cut today with no success and the round reverse it to Bryant with Garcia leading the blocking and a first down into Vikings territory at the 44 yard line well, Garcia got banged up in the first half. He's out there leading the sweep. Yeah, leading the way and not hitting anybody. That was Warwick Dunn. But he was ready. Guy. Yeah, he was looking good. <laughs> Watch it here as 
Jeff's going to hand it off right there on the end around now pitch from Michael Clayton Antonio Bryant. Here's the block. It's Warwick Dunn out there 28. Jeff's out there just making it look good. That's OK. You don't want him. You don't want him hitting too much. Clifton Smith is in and he splits out wide to the left side. Warwick Dunn in the backfield. Garcia. Nobody open. Now he finds a man. It's Michael Clayton who shoved out of bounds at the 38 yard line by Chad Greenway. Let me tell you one of the unsung heroes of this offense. It's this left tackle right here, Donald Penn, one of the better rushers in the league, Jared Allen. And, and it's nothing new for Donald Penn. Every week he's gone against dominant rushers. That time he gets his hands up a little high on Jared Allen, but he's really done a good job and has answered all the questions they've had for him. Out of left tackle against the premier rushers. Jamil Cook in at fullback for the Bucks. Clayton goes in motion. Uh, second down, Warwick Dunn straight ahead. Got a first down at the 33 yard line. Napoleon Harris, the middle linebacker, in on the tackle. Good blocking up front. And here it's Donald Penn again. Jared Allen, this time a run block. And Jared Allen just kind of stands up and catches him. And then you just see the size of Donald Penn. He gets his hands on you right there. And He's able to get good push, but really locked on to Jared go. Allen, and Jared could not disengage. At the 33 out of the shotgun, Garcia pressure, and it's incomplete. Jameel Cook, the fullback, nearest man to the football. Good pressure by Chad Greenway blitzing. When you talk about Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator, everyone thinks Tony Dungy, but watch this as guys come from over here and Jared drops off. This is Jim Johnson stuff. I mean, these are zone dogs. Where you think, yeah, he's a, a Tony Dungy clone. There's Leslie Frazier, worked for Tony Dungy, and a big, big guy in the cover two principles. But when they get into the, you know, the, the pass rush situations, his experiences with Jim Johnson in Philadelphia come to fruition. They run a lot of zone blitzes. Clifton Smith in the backfield, they bunch three receivers to the right side. Garcia throws and connects with Michael Clayton again. Down at the 24 yard line about a yard short of the first down Benny Sapp who was injured in the first half is OK and he made the tackle on the play. As Tim mentioned a very important man in the secondary with Charles Gordon out for the season and if they can catch Benny Sapp in man coverage like they did that time they're going to try to exploit it. Good job by Garcia reading the blitz knowing it was man coverage and then uh, Michael Clayton had Benny Sapp out leveraged into the middle of the hole. Tackles Jeremy Zuda is in and eligible on the right side. Clifton Smith with a hard run for a first down down to the 16 yard line. Darren Sharper makes the tackle again. The Bucks are in the red zone. They've had to settle for a couple of field goals. Boy what a story this Clifton Smith is becoming. Well, and they bring in an extra guy, Jeremy Zuta. Watch his block. Watch the down block by Davin Joseph, and they're running right in the middle. I mean, just two double teams to the right side with the extra offensive lineman created a nice little crease. Then it's all Clifton Smith breaking the tackle on Chad Greenway and picking up extra yards. Dunn and Askew in the backfield on first down. Garcia gets time, and he throws into a crowd. Try to get it to John Gilmore, the tight end. Couple of defenders around him broke it up. Darren Sharper was there along with Medea Williams. Well, this is just a great break on the ball by Medea Williams. It's covered too. Garcia sees it, knows he's got his tight end down the seam, tries to fit him. Whoa. Right in between the linebacker and the safety, and Medea Williams was all over it with his eyes reading the quarterback, getting a nice breakup. Tenth play of the drive for the Bucks. Warwick Dunn in the backfield. Three wide receivers are in. Ike Hilliard in the slot. Got to capitalize in the red zone, Sam. They haven't been able to thus far. Here's Dunn looking for some room. Nice move by Dunn. Flag on the play as he gets inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. But a couple of flags down. We'll check it out with Mike Carey. Could be Jeremy Stevens, the tight end on the hold. And again, shooting themselves in the foot down in the money zone. There it is, another penalty in the red zone. Holding offense number 86. 10 yard penalty is still second down. A drive stopper. 
Well, Warwick Dunn's going to start this way. Pops all the way back. There's the hold right here on this guy, the tight end. You can see he's got Ray Edwards wrapped up from the outside. And as Ray Edwards tries to pull off and get into the running lane, Jeremy Stevens forbid him from doing that by holding on to his shoulder pad. Fourth penalty of the game for the Bucks. As the ball is moved back to the 27 yard line. Second and 20 for the Bucks. Who have both Clifton Smith and Warwick Dunn in there. Smith is in the slot to the right. Garcia scrambles away, dumped it off. Antonio Bryan inside the 10 to the goal line. He's in. There's a flag on the play. It's going to come back. This number 75. Davin Joseph, the right guard, another holding penalty on the Bucks. Mm. Oh, you can see the head coach, how frustrated John Gruden is. There's Davin right there. There's going to be a blitz coming up the middle. Delayed blitz with Chad Greenway, and there it is. I mean, he oh, just yeah. reaches out and hold him. And what? And Ben Lieber, excuse me, blitz. What Ben Lieber's doing? Is really it's an ad blitz and what he's doing is he's reading the running back and if the running back stays in the block he's going to delay blitz that time he noticed and you call it a green dog he noticed that the running back stayed in the block he hit the crease put the instant pressure or late pressure excuse me on Jeff Garcia and Davin Joseph had to hold him. it's now second and 30 for the Bucks. Fred Evans and Brian Robinson in on the defensive line for the Vikings. Have to get to the seven yard line for a first down. There's another flag on the play. Garcia scrambling out of trouble. Looking, throwing too high. It was tipped and fell incomplete. And we'll check out the flag. Clifton Smith, the intended receiver downfield. Offside, defense, number 23. Five yard penalty is still second down. So they get five yards back after losing 20 on penalties to get five yards on this one. How about how about Jeff Garcia and, and his ability to extend plays? I mean, this is the play right before where he makes everything happen with his legs. I mean, he's running down. He's trying to block somebody guy. on this touchdown that came back. I mean, he's in great condition. Now he drops back and does it again in terms of running around and eluding all the pass rush to get the ball off. Second and 25 for the Bucks at the Vikings 32. They have to get to the seven for first down. Everybody out. Garcia looking for Jeremy Stevens. He's got it. Did he hold on? Yes, he did. At the one yard line. It is first and goal for the Bucks. What a play by Jeremy Stevens. I am so impressed with the energy of Jeff Garcia. This throw is absolutely perfect. Here's his matchup right down the seam. That's two buck, which the middle linebacker is dropping out, and he puts it right in the hole in between the linebacker and the safety. You could not throw that football any better. That's a great catch by Stevens. Jeremy Zuda is eligible on the right side as a third tight end. The fullback Askew. He's in. Touchdown. So the Bucks fight through the penalties and the big pass of 31 yards from Garcia to Stevens sets up B.J. Askew for the touchdown run. Askew's first of the season. Real good block down by Donald Penn and then it's all B.J. Askew. He's just going to carry Napoleon Harris right there into the hole. So a little dive play to the fullback. The extra point by Matt Bryant is good. Not only was it his first of the season, first touchdown of his career, it was set up by this pass to Jeremy Stevens. <laughs> 
back in Tampa more than just a game tying drive. It was Jeff Garcia who lives for these moments, re energizing the Buccaneer crowd and, of course, his own teammates. As he has said before, I've been an underdog quarterback all my life. I love defying the odds. And Darren Sharper told me before the game, describing Jeff Garcia, he is a relentless, high energy winner. He was on that drive. Sam, Tim. Oh, spectacular. Thanks, Chris. Matt Bryant kicks it off. The game tied at 13. Maurice Hicks from the three. The wedge in front of him gets a lane and gets up to the 27 yard line. How about BJ Askew in his sixth season in the NFL? His first NFL touchdown. Look at the numbers there on Jeff Garcia. 38 years old. He is so much fun to watch. And, and I'll tell you why. Because he loves the game. And oh. that comes across every time he takes the football field. He can play as long as he can continue to contribute at a high level. Sam, he's contributing at a high level. Big time. Vikings start from the 28. Adrian Peterson, Apahu Tahi in the backfield. Farad, too low, intended for Berrien. Hit the ground incomplete. So an outstanding drive, 11 plays, 80 yards for the Bucks, led by Jeff Garcia. And though they were thrown back 20 yards by two holding penalties, they found a way to well, that, play that drive through. was all him. I mean, extending plays with his legs and then just the perfect pass and a really good catch to Jeremy Stevens, 31 yards. I'm really surprised. And I know Gus Farratt wants to be real patient, but he is yet to try to take one over the top through the air in this game. There's Peterson cutting it back, trying to get outside. And a hard collision up at the 35-yard line. Cato June and Gaines Adams combine on the tackle. And this is what I was talking about at, at halftime, about what Adrian Peterson did at the first quarter. I mean, he was cranking it up, but as Derek Brooks told us on Friday, he said there's one thing we don't want to let him do, and that's fall forward. And I think as you started to see that second quarter get going, after he had that big pop, that 22 yarder they started to turn in his head a little bit and knocking him back rather than him falling forward for extra yards Peterson out Chester Taylor in couple of chances on the D line for the Bucks third and three for our throws first down on a good grab by Sidney Rice up at the 40 yard line his first catch of the game and this is what I was talking about him falling for look at all him falling forward every run here in the first quarter Bam, he's, he's going, and then it stopped right around after that big run, and this was the time in the game. He had a 22-yard pop, then that defense started really swarming to him. Look at all the red jerseys that started getting to him. The first guy gets there, and then all the red jerseys come and collect and get in on the tackle, and you see the drop-off there in the second quarter. There's Peterson for a couple of yards up to the 42-yard line. Time to update the same set to Chiefs. Here's Kurt Benefee. And Drew Brees leads the league in passing. This is one reason why he's got open receivers like Lance Moore. 47 yards on this score, and the Saints have extended their lead over the Chiefs to 20 to 10 in the third quarter. Back to Tampa and Sam, Tim, and Chris. Thanks, Kurt. Drew Brees getting things going as the Saints need to keep pace. They need a win to get to 500. Keep pace in the NFC South. Peterson, nothing there. Turns it the other way. Boy, he made a couple of cuts. Finally, Javon Hay, who tried to wrap him up at the first, at the start of the run, finally was able to stop him at the 47. Well, and you got to be disciplined in this defense on the back side. Watch these guys, because this is perfectly played front side. They're going to force him all the way back. And Greg White slants inside there now. Rondé Barber, Jimmy Wilkerson, these guys know they need to stay backside, not let him circle the defense. Kept him to a relatively short game. Third and two. Vikings four for eight on third down conversions in the game. Peterson. And he shoved back. Chris Hovan. But it, the forward progress is going to be very, very close to the first down. Mark. Hovan wrapped him up. But you see where the spot is for forward progress? About a half yard short. Here's a big decision now. And bringing the chains in, Brad Childress have to make a decision here what he wants to do. If he comes up a little short, there's a there's a challenge flag out there. 
as to the spot of the ball it looks like John Gruden wants to challenge where the forward progress was or did the ball pop loose here I think the play had been oh. stopped and whistled. I think I think they had yeah, stopped. He's, he, the, yeah, he's the, the, the forward progress was done. The whistle blew before yeah. that ball ever came out. And there come the chains in, and I think he's going to be a little bit short. Here's the challenge flag. It's more than a little. It's close to a yard short. So now Mike Carey is coming over. I, 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 Apparently John Gruden challenged the spot. Well, that's a wasted challenge. And I think Mike Carey they're discussing that right now. And I think uh, Mike Carey is saying uh, you can pick up the flag. The ruling on the field is the runner's forward progress was stopped. That is not a challengeable play. Fourth down. Okay. Thank you for the clarification from Mike Carey. Here's the play here. Real good work by Greg White slanting down. He and Chris Hovan getting the tackle there. And then right there, the ball got popped out, but the whistle had already blown. Vikings are six for nine on fourth down conversions this season. They have Adrian Peterson and Chester Taylor in. He tried to hit Adrian Peterson, but he dropped it with Derek Brooks covering him. Farratt with a great job to slip Rondé Barber on the blitz, and the pass was there, but Peterson dropped it. Watch him shake off the blitz from Rondé Barber, just undercuts it, throws a perfect strike, and Brooks knocks it out. Derek Brooks came up big on this yeah, play. Those old legs running with those young legs. Just a really, really good job of splitting the arms and breaking them down. So Adrian Peterson couldn't catch the football. Box start at the Vikings 49. Garcia puts it up short to John Gilmore. Bounces off one man and Ben Lieber able to stop him. Rondé Barber, generally known as one of the better blitzing corners in the league, leaves his feet right there. That's a no-no. Allows Gus to undercut it, and then watch Brooks. Maybe gets there just a hair early, but watch his left arm as he pulls down Adrian Peterson's left arm and then knocks the ball out with his right arm. Peterson's right hand. Peterson oh. got up. He wanted a flag. The official said no flag on the play, and it turns into a great play for Derek Brooks. Warwick Dunn and B.J. Askew. In the backfield, Gilmore got three yards on the four yards on the first down play. Garcia, off the play fake, nobody open, he runs. Dives across the 40, it looks like he's got a first down at around the 39-yard line. He didn't slide, he dove forward. Well, he's not a feet-first kind of guy, he'll tell you that. And, and he was looking for Joey Galloway. Joey Galloway was on the field and ran a deep post and tried to split the safeties and they just played deep to shallow on him. He wasn't open and with all that with Galloway stretch in the field Garcia took off and laid out for the first down. Interesting that John Gruden going to Joey Galloway here later on in the game maybe feeling that the Minnesota is a little tired and he's got a fresh guy in Galloway who didn't play much if at all in the first half. Inches short. Third and inches. Galloway in talking to Jeff Garcia and in talking to John Gruden, they say he still got the burst, the speed downfield. Well, even at his age, that element hasn't left his game. Now, he's dealt with a foot injury most of this season. And you can see the evidence of that on the football field. Their ability to strike you deep has not been good because of the absence of that guy right there, Joey Galloway. The tackle Jeremy Zuda is eligible on the right side. Third and inches, Warwick done. First down. 
Down to the 36-yard line. Let's see what Chris Myers has for us. Chris. Well, Sam, I talked to Joey Galloway in pregame warm-up, so there was a sense of frustration. He tore his groin during training camp, and then, of course, the fracture in the foot injury. But he said he's ready, and he wants to be on the field more. But obviously, the offense has been doing well without him. He said, you may know more about how much I'm going to play than I do, but he's always a threat to be out there, and he's hoping to get more opportunities. Thanks, Chris. Clifton Smith in for Warwick Dunn. And Smith sets up in the backfield. Galloway comes to the right side. Two tight ends in as well. The play fake. The short pass to the tight end, Jeremy Stevens, down the 30 yard line. The Bucks continue to move the ball well. Their offense is up to 277 yards for the game, most of it in the passing game and a lot of it to, to Jeremy Stevens he's got five catches 70 yards in this football game and you're going to see him continue to have a bigger impact he's a mismatch problem he's six foot seven and every bit of it and with Alex Smith hurt and Alex Smith has got an injury their other tight end Jeremy Stevens has picked up the slack through the air Clifton Smith takes the toss two blockers in front of him but a good job the ball popped loose the ball came loose, and the Vikings think they have it. Clifton Smith fumbles. The Vikings recover the first turnover of the game. Ben Lieber recovered the fumble. Cedric Griffin forced it with the hard hit on Clifton Smith. Vikings ball. There's Clifton Smith, the fumble. I'll tell you, it was really good work. By Cedric Griffin knocking it or setting the edge, and then Jamie or Darren Sharp, excuse me, knocking it out. But it's two weeks in a row that Clint, Clifton Smith has had a fumble down near the red zone. Vikings from the 28. Barrage short drop tosses it outside to Garrett Mills, who was injured earlier in the game. Back in the lineup, the tight end makes the grab and is out of bounds at the 34. Here's the Smith fumble right here. There's Cedric Griffin setting the edge, forces him to spin out. Now Sharper comes in with the right hand and bats it out. Now watch the eyes of Clifton Smith right here. Oh, come oh. on. Give me that ball. Lieber comes up with the recovery. And the head coach comes over. I think that was encouragement for the rookie. Second and four. Peterson had a good hit. Good play by Tadar Jackson. The safety came up in an excellent tackle just before Peterson could get going. Well, Adrian Peterson is a great cut up runner, and, and he doesn't always cut back. A lot of times he'll stick his foot in the dirt and just cut up. And that time, 36, Tadar Jackson, again, this is his run fit. Right there, it's called the C gap run fit, which is inside the offensive tackle. He played it perfectly. That's good stuff on a big, big power back. Sidney Rice in as a third wide receiver. Chester Taylor in the backfield. Farad. Nobody open. Pulled it down. Now he finds a man. It's Sidney Rice. A first down across midfield to the Bucks' 48-yard line. A pickup of 17 on the play. Big third down conversion by Gus Farad. One thing Gus will do is he'll he'll read a defense from deep to shallow and he'll try to hit you first with the big play. If it's not there, he'll double clutch it and pull it down. He wanted it deep there. Now he's got to put it down. Forces Savvy Piscatelli to rush up on him. Opens a window right behind the safety and he finds his receiver. Two tight ends in. Shanko motions. Peterson in the backfield. Farad puts it up and he's got a man. It's a first down at the 30 yard line Bernard Berrien with his third catch of the game. Pick up of 19 on the play. Good throw by Farad. I want you to watch Barrett Rude right here who gets out on Adrian Peterson and then realizes he needs to get back to the curl and watch what he does here. He knows uh oh now he peels and tries to get back into the throwing lane. And you can see right there, he knew it was coming, and Gus Rock found it right behind him. On first down, Peterson stopped in the backfield. Outstanding play by Cato June. Stopping Peterson for a loss. Cato June right here, he's going to get a splash play. He's going to get up inside, and he has not had a lot of them. 
this year and that's just a run blitz right there that's a run blitz called by Monty Kiffin where you're the force guy go hit that fullback with your inside shoulder force it back inside well he was able to hit the fullback with his inside shoulder and get a tackle for loss, loss big time of, play loss of three second and 13 Klein, Klein saucer shifts Chester Taylor in the backfield for out in trouble they got him third sack of the game this one to the former Viking Chris Hoban He started his NFL career in Minnesota and he's very comfortable here in Tampa now. And this is the first sack of his season here in 2008. He does the dirty work on the inside. That's just what you call a bull rush on the right guard, Anthony Herrera. And then you saw the lack of mobility by Gus Farad. I mean, he just kind of ran right into him. And once Big Hovan gets his hands on you, forget about it. We have reached the end of the third quarter and this has turned into the battle we expected. Two teams looking for first place in their respective divisions. Tiger looking on. We're even. Welcome back to Tampa. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers. We start the fourth quarter of the Vikings. A big third down play. Third and 19. Chester Taylor in the backfield. At the Bucks 38. Bucks fake the blitz. Rush four. Barat looking, chased by Kevin Carter. Carter got him. Fourth sack of the game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kevin Carter playing in his 218th consecutive game. Never missed a game, makes a big play. And that's pretty amazing. There's Gaines Adams there. He takes it inside. It's a stunt where the tackle now comes to the outside. Kevin Carter's got contained. And look at him jump on his horse and run. And pretty amazing at his position to have never missed a game. You just wow. said it because of injury. 14 years still playing at a high level. Ike Hilliard is deep. Chris Cluey aiming for the corner. And it bounces at the five. It goes through the end zone. 39 yard punt, but it only nets 19. Good stop by the Tampa Bay defense. Four sacks for the Bucks defense today. Tim. Well, we talked about it in the open. That was an area they worked on during the bye week. They had to get their pass rush juiced up. They have today. You said it. Four sacks. Askew and Dunn in the backfield. Garcia to throw. Buys some time. Waving people around. How about those moves? And it all worked out for about a no gain on the plays. Back to the line of scrimmage. How about this day for Jeff Garcia? Rolling, buying time, and then finding Warwick Dunn with a beautiful pass. And then he took this penalty hit by Ray Edwards. Yeah, most quarterbacks stay down off of that one. He just got tougher. Went and got the chin fixed up, then throws a big throw right down the seam to Jeremy Stevens. But he's played good today. We call him the Magic Man, Sam. 18 for 24, 215 yards for Jeff Garcia. On second down, Warwick Dunn. Still fighting up to the 28-yard line. Chris Myers, is it getting cold for you on the sideline? I'm standing in the sun with Tiger Woods. Good but, man. Uh, we're enjoying the game. Jeff Garcia described the relationship with uh, John Gruden himself as feisty, but he said it's getting better. He said, John's always trying to call the perfect game, and he said he wants me after he starts a, a sentence, I have to finish it. And he, he did say in the headset when he sends and plays, Gruden doesn't just send in the play. He forgets he's on a microphone, and he's yelling and screaming and getting a running commentary. He said, leave that to the announcers. I'm trying to work a football game. <laughs> Garcia needs an on off button. That's all. Third and two. We're done in the backfield. Garcia. Looking, running for the first down. The scramble by Garcia. Jared Allen took him down. And Jeff goes over, wanted to help. He wanted to help the defender up. He wanted to help Jared Allen up. Now, Jeff Garcia says, you know what? He doesn't worry about the other stuff. There are too many good things going on in his life. He's got a baby, six and a half months old, and his wife's expecting a second child. Look, he's a football player, and I, and I think his style frustrates John Gruden. I really do. I mean, he doesn't get back and sit in the pocket and get to his first, second, third read. All he does is win and, and make plays, and you saw a good example of it right there. From the 34, the play fake. Pressure. 
Garcia gets rid of it to P.J. Askew, and Askew gets a couple of yards to the 36. Let's find out what's happening in Atlanta and go to Kurt Menefee. It's the Michael Turner show, but, you know, this is easy. Look at this huge hole against Denver. Turner takes it 28 yards, his second touchdown of the day, and Atlanta retakes the lead on top of the Broncos. Right now, it is 20 to 17. Back to Steady Sam Thanks, and Kurt. That, Thanks, Kurt. Sorry about that. That is quite a game back and forth, Atlanta and Denver, and Atlanta trying to keep pace in the NFC South. What a race. Dunn and Clifton Smith in the backfield for the Bucks on second and eight. And Garcia calls a timeout. Check things out on the sideline with a game tied. Back in Tampa, how about Tampa challenging the Minnesota defense? Well, Gruden said it could be a signature game for our offensive line, and they've hit Minnesota right in the middle, where Minnesota's been the stiffest of any team all year long, right down the middle with those two big D tackles. Smith is in the slot to the left, done in the backfield. Garcia rolls, runs, and dives forward. Very close to the first down. Good effort by Jeff Garcia. Boy, he is taking it all on his back. Look at the number coming into today to the middle of that defense where those two big D tackles are. 1.5 yards per attempt and what they've done against offensive rushing attacks. And today, Tampa running the football right between the tackles. They're up over four yards a carry. Garcia picked up a first down on that last scramble. Ball just short of the 45. And Garcia back. Well done. Into Minnesota territory down to the 48-yard line. Napoleon Harris, the middle linebacker, with a tackle. But Garcia mixing it up well. And I'll tell you what he does by a with extending plays with his legs and moving around and buying time and then B a play like that where he just hits his back step and gets it out to his check down is really eliminates the pass rush. I mean you think of Minnesota coming into this game how much they had been on the quarterback over the last several weeks today in this game. I don't believe they have a sack or they have one sack for no no minus yards. Second and short. Done. Find the open. Warwick Dunn down to the 37 yard line, a first down. Chad Greenway makes the tackle, 12 yard pickup for Warwick Dunn. Good job by the Bucks of mixing things up. Real good block by the center. Watch Jeff Fain right here. Left guard's going to pull out. He's going to go out to the left, and now he's going to seal and turn on Kevin Williams right in between the tackles once again. And Warwick. Dunn is now 19th all time in rushing in NFL history, moving ahead of Ricky Waters. He uh, picks up 45 yards in this game. Smith and Askew in the backfield. Clifton Smith hit by Darren Sharper gets down to the 33 yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Good drive. By the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that started at their 20. They're eating up the clock and getting closer to scoring position. They're in with, within range. There you see the all time list and Warwick Dunn, number 19, all time. Two tight ends in. Garcia rolling and throwing. Connects with Jeremy Stevens. First down at the 19-yard line. We welcome you to Tampa. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers in a good ball game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Minnesota Vikings tied at 13. Vikings led it to half 13 to 6. Bucks with an 80-yard drive to start the third quarter, tied it, and now the Bucks on another drive that started from their own 20-yard line. And Jeff Garcia has been absolutely flawless in this football game, extending plays with his legs, keeping his eyes downfield, and keeping that defense off balance. Warwick Dunn picking his way for a couple of yards just across the 17-yard line. Jeff Garcia, 21 for 27, 
239 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions, but he's helped set up touchdowns. And he has scrambled well. He's bought time. He's found receivers like Warwick Dunn. He took a hard hit. This was a penalty on Ray Edwards. He got up from that hit. They fixed him up. And he threw a 31-yard connection to Jeremy Stevens that set up the touchdown run by B.J. Askew. This is the 11th play of the drive for the Bucks. Garcia throws a connect to Michael Clinton at the 10 yard line. Darren Sharper. All right, just want to make sure that you understand that because that Green Bay Chicago game is not competitive anymore, we are taking you to the Tampa Bay Minnesota game, which is quite competitive. In fact, it's all tied at 13 in the fourth quarter, so let's get it back down to Tampa and hear the guys with the call. And the offensive tackle, Jeremy Zuda, reports in as eligible. The beauty of Jeff Garcia, it's like playground football for him. Oh, I mean, the way he plays and improvises, it's like. Being in sixth grade on the schoolyard. Warwick Dunn, and he didn't get there. Pat Williams leading the way, the big defensive tackle. I thought he was going to pound his chest for a minute, Tim. Here's Big Pat right here, number 94. He's got Kevin Williams just inside of him. They're both pinching down inside, and look at him put. Aaron Sears on roller skates. I mean, Aaron Sears, he got up underneath him, and then Aaron, Aaron Sears' cleats locked into the turf, and he just drove him straight backwards. Third time in the game, the Bucks have gotten into the red zone and have failed to get it into the end zone and had to settle for a field goal. Matt Bryant, 29 yard attempt. The holders, Josh Bidwell. And the kick is through. Bryant is three for three in the game, and the Bucks have taken the lead for the first time in the game. They lead it 16 to 13. Well, there's a big nose tackle, Pat Williams. That's the definition of swelling up on defense, what he just did. That was their first third down stop this half in terms of the third down conversions. Tampa Bay was three for three up to that point where Pat Williams made that big play. Bucks have had one drive of for five minutes, 35 seconds, and this last drive was eight minutes, 52 seconds. It could be wearing down the Minnesota defense. Bryant's kickoff, Maurice Hicks from the nine. Balls on and the ball comes loose. Hicks fighting for it, it's Bucks ball. Recovered by Brian Clark. Will Allen, the special teams captain, is the guy that came in and ripped it out. And ball security has been terrific all day for Minnesota. We talked about it in the open, and at the worst possible time, they have a turnover, and it's on special teams. Will Allen just goes and throws his right arm in there and punches that football out, and Tampa's able to come up with the recovery. Injured Bucks player down on the field. Hicks fumbles. And a big turnover for the Minnesota Vikings, their first of the game. The Bucks with a lead and the ball in scoring position. Geno Hayes, backup linebacker and a key special teams performer, has helped to the sideline. Can't put any weight on his right leg. It has been a hard hitting game. First turnover for the Vikings, Maurice Six on the return, and now the Bucks, who have been a good fourth quarter team all season, they especially with three comeback wins in the fourth quarter, they've scored three, and now they have the ball in scoring position. Look at the time of possession, oh, ball control, playing keep away this half. Well, those two drives, five and a half minutes at 8.50 on the last one. From the Vikings, 26. Warwick Dunn. Wrapped up and pulled down by Chad Greenway. If you joined us late, Ernest Graham started the game for the Bucks, but he got hurt, injured ankle. Remember what I said earlier, Sam, about a fullback needing to pretend he's a tailback in terms of knowing who to block and where to fit? Look at him go left. Now he's going to see the hole. He's going to cut it back like a running back would see it. And he ends up getting a great block on Napoleon Harris. Now it was a good defensive play coming from the backside by Minnesota, but that's what I was talking about. It's not just going and blocking a guy at fullback. You've got to see the vision point like you're a tailback 
and know when to cut back and know when to stay front side. That time he cut back and did it perfectly. Askew and Dunn in the backfield. The toss to Dunn. Askew leads him. Dunn cutting inside is inside the 20. And down at the 19 yard line, another tackle by Chad Greenway, the leading tackler on the Vikings team. But Warwick Dunn has had 15 carries, 48 yards. Not overly impressive, but they've continued to be effective with the run. Well, he's had a good game. Enough. They've used it definitely enough, and especially here in the in the second half. He's also been good in the pass game. Warwick Dunn's got four catches, 16 yards a catch in this football game. Galloway is in. Dunn in the backfield. Ike Hilliard, three wide receivers. On third and three, Garcia connects. Antonio Bryant, there's a flag down. Bryant to the 10 yard line. And check out the flag on this play. It's going to be a legal contact, I think, on it's, the defense. It's against the Vikings. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 23 is declined. Play results. First down. And Cedric Griffin, the quarterback, but it's a first down. And again, here are the Bucks in the red zone where they have struggled throughout the season to get the ball into the end zone for touchdowns. They did it once today after getting set back on two holding penalties. They had a second and 30. They got a five yard. They got five yards on a penalty by the Vikings and then that big pass from Garcia to Jeremy Stevens 31 yards set up the touchdown first and goal just across the 10 yard line. for a couple of yards. Time to update the Packers and the Bears. A big one in Green Bay. Kurt. Yeah, a lot of your audience was watching this game, and the Bears go for it on fourth down, down by 24. It doesn't work out. Fumble by Orton, scooped up by Jason Hunter. He takes it back 53 yards. It's now 34 to 3. Packers on top. Seven and a half minutes left to go. Uh, in fairness, I guess we have to say left to go in regulation, Sam. Right. You're accurate about that, Kurt. We'll step out for a moment here. Adrian Peterson has been held down in the second and third quarters after a great start, but he wants his defense to stop the Bucks and give him a chance to lead a comeback for second and goal. Garcia still with it. Throws and he missed Warwick Dunn, who was wide open. That, that play kind of stumbled around and did not connect. Well, Jeff's going to pivot out here and watch. He ends up tripping up right there, goes down to his knees, pops right back up. And Warwick Dunn never knew it was too late by the time he spun, him, spun around and the ball was behind him. You know, I'm surprised today with all this Im improvising that Jeff Garcia has been able to uh, do that Minnesota hasn't had a spy player on him. A guy that's really watching Jeff Garcia to run with him wherever he runs when the play breaks down. There's a big play, third and goal, blitz coming. Garcia rolling. Throws it away as he was chased by Ray Edwards, who had a hold of him. So once again, the Bucks have to settle for a field goal. This is the fourth time that they have gotten into the red zone chance to get it into the end zone and have had to settle for a field goal. Looking for a six point lead but it opens the door for the Vikings and for Adrian Peterson and let's remember what happened last week and right at the end of that game for Adrian Peterson willing that team to victory 26 yard attempt for Matt Bryant. Josh Bidwell the holder. Right through, Bryant four for four in the game. The Bucks have a six point lead. 19 to 13. The Vikings have not scored here in the second half. The Bucks have been attacking that big middle of the Minnesota defense. Which is surprising to me. I mean, they have taken it right downhill at the two defensive tackles with a tremendous amount of success. 
Tampa hasn't been run on in the middle of their defense like this all year. And they came into this game as one of the best teams in run defense, but when people do crease them, it's usually off tackle. Bouncing it outside, and look today, 92 yards. First nine games, 72 yards collectively allowed through the middle of that defense. Today, Tampa's been able to strike them with 92. And Adrian Peterson is back deep to return the kickoff. With Maurice Hicks having fumbled on the last return, it's Peterson. A possible breakaway here. We'll see how the Bucks defend. I'll be surprised if they kick it to him. I would be surprised if they either squipped it or pooched it up into the air so one of the other guys back there in the, in the line gets it. His first return of the season. If he returns. And he'll get a chance. Peterson from the four. And he, it's well covered at the 20-yard line. He was hit and stopped. Clifton Smith, who has been a, a really, he has stood out on special teams for the Bucks. He's been the first man down there. Well, he does a great job of what you call just setting the edge on the corner. Peterson wants to bounce it out. He's right there. Tackles that outside leg. Clifton Smith asking John Gruden about him. Said, tell us about this kid who you brought up. And he goes, man, that, he's just a football player. I don't care where you put him. He's a running back. He can return. He can cover. He's all ball. And now the Vikings have to go 80 yards. And the Bucks call a timeout. Could, could be a problem with personnel. They have one time, one timeout remaining. NFL on Fox next week. It's a big doubleheader day. The Bucks will be at Detroit. The Vikings at Jacksonville. Tim and I will be in Baltimore where the Eagles visit the Ravens, 49ers, and Cowboys. Late games, Giants are at Arizona. And a big one in the NFC South with the Falcons and the Panthers. And it all begins with a Bill Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. If you're Gus Farratt, your whole playbook's still open. I mean, there's plenty of time with 323 to run your whole offense. And boy, has he struggled really since about 20 minutes into this game. And the Vikings have two timeouts remaining. They had the big comeback against Green Bay last week. This one to Bobby Wade. Trying to get to the sideline. And he does to stop the clock. Pick up of seven up to the 27-yard line. Akeem Tlaib took him out. And here's where you love the experience of Gus Verrott. I mean, you go back to, to the last four games, and I think three of them being wins, he's come back in the fourth quarter and led his team to victory. They haven't had a lot of opportunity because of the ball control by Tampa here in the second half. On second down. Everybody out. Barat hit from behind and it's just missed by Adrian Peterson. Made a good effort on that deflected pass as Farratt was hit by Gaines Adams. Watch the get off by Gaines Adams second year. Look at that takeoff and he's just going to dip and run right around Ryan Cook and there slaps the ball as Gus is getting rid of it. Those are the kind of plays this Tampa defense feasts on. When they can get that ball tipped and popped up into the air, it's usually a turnover. Big third down. Chester Taylor in the backfield. Everybody out. Barat short. Andre Allison is a yard loss on the play back to the 26. He never got going. He was the safety valve for Gus Barat. Fourth down. And the Vikings will go for it. to get to the 30. Everybody out. Farad throws. And Andre and Sidney Rice did not grab it. He scooped it. And the ball goes over on downs. Rice dove, but he got it on a short hop.
Big defensive stand, and Gaines Adams had a big play in that series. Well, they had pretty decent rush on him, and it's going to be a double out here and here, and it's just not a good throw. No. I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure if he was trying to get it, and it was good pressure right by Hovan, but I'm not so sure if he was throwing it to Bobby Wade and just threw it too wide or was trying to get it to Sidney Rice and threw it too short. Either way, he didn't connect. And the Bucks have the ball at a six-point lead. And Warwick Dunn gets a couple of yards. Warwick Dunn, they have counted on him to carry the load for the running game. And he has carried 18 times. Vikings use a timeout. They have one remaining. 18 carries, 57 yards for Warwick Dunn. Four catches in the game as well. Giving him 22 touches. And he's just coming back from a, a back problem. And the bye week did him a lot of good. And Chris Myers is downstairs with more on Warwick Dunn. Well, his story, an inspirational one, he actually has a book out called Running For My Life, and it's well documented as a teenager. His mother, a police officer in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, shot in the line of duty, and he had to help raise the rest of the other siblings. But just recently, Warwick Dunn told me he sat down across from his mother's killer in prison. The murderer is on death row, and he said he wanted to forgive the man, and he said he felt this great lift off of his own shoulders so that he could move on with his life. What a story. Dunn right here is stopped. For a loss back to the 25 back to Chris for more on that Chris well and he, he just said that it was important that he was carrying around this something that he couldn't describe all these years and he said football was his outlet through life he ended up going to Florida State and of course uh, started his career with the Buccaneers Atlanta and back in Tampa where he said it was important to finish his career and it's almost a, an important chapter in his life that's closed in terms of the killer of his mother but he does a lot of things for charity uh, single parents uh, helps uh, build homes and get jobs uh, around the country again the book is running for my life, my journey in the game of uh, football and beyond. And I know that Buck players and the Tampa Bay community are glad to have him back here. Sam, Tim? Well, he's a great human being, Chris. Sam, no question. And, you know, overcoming all that adversity, overcame depression as part of all that. All that stuff's in his book, at, in his book and the stuff he's done in the community. And, and Chris mentioned it really is, is second to none. Great human being. Here's a third down play. Bucks are in field goal range. The toss to Warwick Dunn. Slowed down by Pat Williams. Reversed his field and slipped. And is down back at the 28-yard line. The Vikings are out of timeouts. We reach the two-minute warning. The Bucks have a six-point lead. They'll try to add to it when we come back. Bay Buccaneers strong defensively in the second half. They've shut out the Vikings in the second half. They've put 13 points on the board, and now Matt Bryant will try a 46 yarder. Andrew Economos, the long snapper, the holder, Josh Bidwell. Bryant four for four in the game. And this one is outside the upright. No good. It's still a six-point lead. That could have put it away, but Bryant just missed. Wide right. And the Vikings with no timeouts remaining. And they'll get good field position, too. They're going to get field position right from where the spot of the kick took place. Just pushes this one out yeah. to the right a little bit. Minnesota's going to start on the 36-yard line, though. He needed to talk to Tiger about that hook. He needed to hook it in. So here are the Vikings with a chance. From the 36. Barat looking downfield. He puts it up deep. It's up for grabs. And it's incomplete. A flag on the play. Akeem Talib broke up the play. Bobby Wade was there. I think this will be OPI on Bobby Wade, yeah. I believe. Okay. Trying oh. to prevent a keep to leave from getting the interception. Pass interference. Offense number 19. 10 yard penalty for first down. 
Tlaib had great position. Well, he ran with him the whole way. I mean, this is a mismatch speed-wise, and they're going to run Bobby Wade on really just a takeoff route right down the side. And you can see Tlaib, I mean, just right in his hip pocket the whole way. That was perfect coverage. And Bobby Wade had to go up and hook him around the neck and pull him down, or it would have been an interception. He had to make a play. He was our yellow book, uh, future face. We had to get a play from Akeem Tlaib. Now, ball back to the 26. First and 20, Chester Taylor in the backfield with Gus Farah. That pass hung up there way too long. There's Farah, and he's hit. Jimmy Wilkerson. Fifth sack of the game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had had 15 coming into today's game. They get five. Well, this is a tackle end game, and he just presses it up. And there's that four-man rush that the Bucs have been looking for. Fifth sack of the day. He dumps it off to Chester Taylor with some room and a nice move. Hit hard. The ball came loose. And the Bucs have it. Rondé Barber recovers the fumble. I think it was Jimmy Wilkerson in great pursuit, chasing it down from behind that knocked it out. That's the guy who just had the big sack, 97. Watch him trailing right here. 97, he's running, he's running, he's running. Now he's going to lay out, swat it out with his left hand, and Rondé Barber picks it up. Wilkerson, two big plays on this series. Well, and here's the sack. I mean, he just presses the gap on that tackle end stunt, gets inside the offensive tackle, Ryan Cook, and finishes on the quarterback. Boy, he's really played well, and they need that out of that position. I mean, if there's one position on this defense, it's the defensive tackle spot in the pass rush that they need to elevate. Today, Jimmy Wilkerson elevated his game. Bucks defense really came to life in the second half, and with some the the entire team the offense came to life as well they had some good long drives so the Bucks are going to put this one away and stay with us because coming up right after the game it's the Fox NFL Sunday post game show presented by AT&T we'll also have the latest exclusive BCS standings we've got highlights scores from around the league interviews and a whole lot more with the entire gang in the studio. The Vikings will fall to five and five, but they'll still be in a tie for first place. It'll now be a three-way tie because Minnesota, Chicago, and Green Bay will all be five and five. And for Tampa Bay, they go five and oh at home. That's the first time ever a Bucks team has won their first five home games. Today's game, produced by Mike Burke, directed by Rich Russo, Associate Director Tom Yoey, Broadcast Associate Eric Mandia, Technical Producer Frank Phillips, Pre-Game Show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy, Senior Producer Bill Brown, the Executive Producers are Ed Gorin and David Hill. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with a big second half, defeat the Minnesota Vikings 19-13. We'll be back in Tampa in just a moment.